guys have been playing uh, pretty good basketball the last few games. Did you do you have anything that you can point at that says this is why we're playing so well? I think there's a few things. I think our kids are starting to understand that if we have a chance to be good uh, after the experience in California, uh, if we have a chance to be good, we're going to have to do it together as a group. And uh, it was a disappointing trip capped off with a loss against UC Riverside that I think woke some of our guys up. And then on top of that, without three or four players the last few games, I think the guys that were in uniform understood that they really needed to play as hard as they could and, and play together as a group to be successful. The other thing is, I think our scout team has been outstanding uh, every practice. I mean, they really put in a lot of time to give our, to give our other guys kind of a break in practice um, so we're not so fatigued. And, you know, a couple of guys that are redshirting this year, Royce Woolridge, uh, Dominic Ballard, um, Chooks, Ragabu, those guys have been doing a great job competing as hard as they can and executing things as, as well as they can. And I think that's contributed to uh, some of our success. You uh, got a bunch of talented kids that aren't playing. Are you worried at all the way the chemistry's been, the way they've been out, that as you start mixing them back in, that they, they're going to have to kind of mix into that recipe a little bit? Well, that's what's going to happen. They're going to have to find a way to fit into what we have going on right now. You know, I feel bad for them. They've been injured. But it's, it's their job now to try to fit into the way we are playing. And, and uh, when I say that, I mean as hard and aggressive as we are playing. And at the same time, uh, the fact that we are really sharing the ball well. So now I don't see any reason why they can't fit into that, but that's up to them. Well, um, oftentimes, you guys shot the ball so well on Sunday, oftentimes uh, coaches will say good shooting is, or comes from good passing. Did you guys pass the ball well on Sunday? We passed the ball pretty well. We, we, uh, there were a lot of possessions in that game, and we put up a lot of points. But um, I just felt, for the most part, we did a nice job of letting the game come to us. And sometimes we even, there are a few possessions we almost overpassed. But I, I like that. I like it when we're really sharing the ball and, and playing selfless basketball. Lastly for me, you got finals coming up next week. How does that, I mean, you're one of the few sports that can really get affected by it. How, how does that uh, affect what you're going to be able to do uh, after, after uh, I mean, you got finals this week, pardon me. Right. How's, how does that affect for your preparation for Sunday's game and then, after that's over, how's it, how does it affect your preparation for the, for the first conference game when you have two weeks of kind of off time, you know what I mean? Right, right. Well, fortunately I've been through it before, and I think the rest of our staff has, and, and most of our players, so it's not like the first time we're going to deal with this situation. We will try to um, keep the practices fairly short, and but at the same time try to go hard and be aggressive during practice so we continue to – to be competitive. Uh, that's probably my biggest concern is we have two games coming up before conference, and one's Western Oregon and the other is Pepperdine. Uh, neither is on the road. And, and then we go in to play Oregon and Oregon State up in Spokane. So we need to keep that competitive level every day in practice and, and be able to sustain that going into conference play. I think that'll be our biggest chore. Pardon me? How much of a practice? Like, you didn't practice yesterday, did you? <clears throat> no, we didn't. We were going to practice tonight and then uh, maybe take one other day off Wednesday or Thursday. Just not sure yet. Or we could go every day, but just go a shorter amount of time. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is wait and look at the kids' final schedules tomorrow morning and, and figure out uh, what, what we think is best. about Dexter's development. It seems like he's getting more and more playing time as the season progresses. Yeah, he's been one of the guys that's benefited from some of these other kids being out. But, you know, just like the other day in the game, I mean, he, he literally dove 
for two loose balls. And one of them was when we were up about 35 or 40 right in front of our bench. And it was just instinctively uh, a loose ball and he just dove for it. Those are the type of plays, <coughs> those are the type of plays that uh, are going to help our team and show us that he's, you know, just not just a soft kid. He might be thin, but he's trying to play as hard as he can. And he's doing a great job on the defensive end. We're really proud of the job he's doing defensively. Ken, it seems like uh, defensively, uh, in the beginning of the year, the team struggled a little bit with perimeter defense. Um, and it seems like at least uh, Marcus specifically has been pushing more out to the perimeter. Idaho uh, rings a bell where he was covering uh, Jeremy Geiger for most of the game. Um, is that something that's by design? And, and is that the response that you've been expecting from the team on it? Well, that's the response we've expected out of, out of Marcus. And I think he's... Uh, embracing that role as a as a lockdown defender and doing the best he can in that area, and I, I agree with you. The last few games, he's really done a nice job guarding some guys that that are good players. I mean, the Foster kid out of uh, Santa Clara is one of the leading three point field goal shooters in the nation. I think he led it last year, and uh, Marcus did an outstanding job when he was on the floor guarding him. And, and do you think that, uh, I mean, obviously being around the program for such a long time that that, uh, you know, that sort of defensive leadership sort of trickles down and that's been sort of, uh, I guess, a spark for your team? I think it has. And I think, I think the guy that's, again, uh, learned from Marcus is Dexter. He's, uh, he's kind of our backup Marcus right now defensively on, on two or threes or, or, or wings that can score and shoot it. And I think Dexter's learning from Marcus just uh, how to get through screens, how to contest without fouling, um, doing some of those things on great shooters. So it's been good to see Marcus lead in that way. And, and uh, obviously you get uh, one more game at Beasley here, and then you're, you're away from Beasley for a little bit. Uh, you know, how important is it for you guys to, you know, obviously you're playing especially well at home, to kind of keep that role going and, and bring that on the road? Well, it's always important to win. And for us to continue to do what we've been doing here the last week and a half or so, it'd be nice to, uh, to get a victory here in Beasley this weekend. And then as we go to Seattle and then up to Spokane, and then I think it's Utah and then Colorado, uh, we, we hope to continue to play at the same level and not get concerned about where we are playing, just how we are playing. You guys, I'm not saying like there's a voice of concern, but are you, are you, uh, do you feel like your team is really going to be tested? Uh, obviously, you have uh, five conference games uh, away from Beasley, although Oregon, Oregon State, obviously in Spokane, um, is pretty backloaded with home games. Uh, you know, do you feel you're going to get a good read on what your team is going to be able to do in conference play with a schedule like that? Yeah, I think it's pretty similar to most of the other teams in our conference, and. Uh... You know, the positive is we're home. It's finals, and we're, we're at home, not missing classes, not missing tests. And yet we still want to be able to play games, so we've scheduled those games at home. It's a rough time of year to be traveling uh, dur during the finals week or just prior to. Yeah. Uh, recently, the, the Pac-12 has kind of struggled as a as in non-conference games, and, and just just last week, as a matter of fact, after you guys beat Idaho, they went down and beat Oregon State on their court. Uh, are you surprised how the conference is kind of laying out right now? I am surprised, but I, th I think it's been a little bit unusual. I know there was, uh, you know, that game in particular, I know there was a death of a young man on the football team two, di two days prior to that game. And my understanding is uh, he was really, really close with uh, Jared Cunningham and a few of the other players. And as I watched that game, not to take anything away from Idaho, they did a great job, have a very good team. But I do think, I do believe that, that it affected that team that night. I think a couple other teams in our conference have been affected by uh, off-the-court issues. You know, UCLA, Arizona, to name a couple. Uh, Cal recently had a suspended guy, and then they went to San Diego State and lost by a couple. And uh, unfortunately, our conference is um, 
not done real well, like you said, against some of the, the power teams uh, around the country. So it sounds like you're expecting all these teams to get well by the time they play Washington State. I think they'll be well uh, physically and mentally come conference, and that's the whole idea. You've you got to make some decisions this time of year, and especially in the next two, two and a half weeks, what direction you're going to go as a ball club. And if things have just gone perfect, then you're, you're probably where you want to be uh, when you thought about it in the, in the off season. But things change. And I think as, as things change, whether it's injuries or uh, suspensions or the young man from Oregon transferred a couple of weeks ago, you make adjustments and you put your, put your team together and hopefully have them together and go in the right direction at the end of December. That being said, you must be pretty happy with where you guys are going then because you've been, you've been dealing with same, some of the same sort of issues. Yes, I, and I am. You know, the first question you asked about um, integrating these guys back into the system, it's a good problem to have. And I'm glad that we're having some success right now, winning a couple games, playing pretty well, playing together. And now we're adding some guys uh, back in, into what we're trying to do that are pretty good players. Can you tell us where they're at right now with those four guys, uh, starting with, say, uh, Faisal and his concussion? Yeah, I think Faisal will be able to practice today. I just walked in the door. I was on a recruiting trip. Uh, and I just literally walked in the door two minutes before I got on this teleconference. Um, so I do, I do not have the report from the trainer yet, but I believe he will be able to practice this evening, if not for sure tomorrow. Uh, Abe Lodwick and Mike Ladd, I believe, can be back out on the floor by tomorrow, at least getting shots up. Okay. You think there's any chance uh, Mike would be able to play on Sunday? Yeah, I, I believe all three of them have a chance to play on Sunday, especially okay. Faisal, especially Faisal. But I think Mike Ladd and Abe Lodwick will be on the practice floor tomorrow, uh, at least getting shots up. And then, you know, hopefully every day it's progressed from there as, as our trainer sees it. Thanks. Any more questions for Coach? Uh, I'll go ahead and take one. Hey, Coach. Um, looking ahead to the Seattle game, you've got a couple guys sort of making a homecoming to, to the west side, and in particular, Devontae Lacey. Could you talk a little bit about his progress during the first few games and what you've seen that's impressed you and what you've seen that, you know, some stuff he has to work on? Well, the first two games that he played in, one was an exhibition game. I think he was our leading scorer with like 20 or 21 points. Then the next game out was our first game of the year on ESPN against a top 20 team in Gonzaga and or 25 whatever they were and he played very well that night uh, since then he probably hasn't played quite as well you know when you look back over the whole game but he's also being asked to play way more minutes because of the injuries of other guys and I think we're demanding for him to play a certain number of minutes and at a certain level of intensity on the defensive end that he's not used to. But there's no doubt in my mind, in time, he's going to be a really good player, and he's pretty good right now for a freshman. So we're, we're, very, we're very happy with him, uh, but he's like a lot of other freshmen. It's a, it's a learning process. Oh, and coming out of high school, you know, you could see that the, the scoring was obviously there. However, uh, you touched on playing at this level, or high defensive level. Uh, you know, what are some of the things that you tried to instill in, him in the off season during these first few games to make him step up uh, his defensive game? Well, he he's uh, trying to play as hard as he can as long as he can, and that's that's difficult for someone that's not used to going real hard for maybe a six eight minute span at this level. And so I think it's just going to take time for him to understand. Uh, how to be aware and locked in to every situation, most every second. I mean, we've broken it down to where he's played great defense and then he relaxes for two seconds, and that's all it takes is for his man to get open. Uh, and yet he's not unlike anybody else. We're, we're picking on him a little bit because we know what he's capable of doing. 
and he's behind the other guys a little bit in that area. Um, but he's also the, the only guard on our team that's not back from last season. So he kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in certain areas. But um, we're working with him, and he's had a great attitude, and he's learning to play harder uh, for longer intervals, and that's going to help his game. Okay. Offensively, where do you see him fitting in, and what kind of role do you see him fitting into not only this year, but uh, years on down the line as he matures and he fits uh, and then grows into the system? We think he can be a, a really good scoring guard, whether that's at the one or the two, uh, who knows, in a sense, who cares. He's just a really good guard, and he's got a good feel for the game. I, I, I think at times he's a little bit on the careless side right now with the ball. Uh, so what ends up happening is sometimes he makes some really sweet passes, but there's other times where those, turn, those end up being turnovers. And so we're trying to clean that part of his game up a little bit. I think he's going to become a better ball handler. Uh, he's got a nice stroke. And his, his biggest challenge is going to be um, becoming a better defender. But he has the ability to do it, so there's, uh, it's just a matter of time before he is a better defender.